Uh, Colt, with the issues uh, on pump coverage Sunday, now you've got another uh, strong returner in Marcus Jones. Mm -hmm. uh, what has to change and be different for improvement in that area on Sunday? Yeah, it, start, it starts with the operation. We got to protect. You know, our number one goal in punt is protect. Um, give Stoney a chance to get the ball off, uh, and then Stoney's got to do a better job getting the ball up in the air. Um, in coverage, we got to make plays. Uh, last week was unacceptable. Um, we're down the field. Uh, we had many, many opportunities to make a play, and we just didn't. Um, you know, and then one thing I, I do want to mention is, uh, you know, our effort has to improve, and uh, our effort, our finish is something that we're going to clean up, and uh, I, I know we will. Why do you think effort's been lagging? Uh, great question. Um, Great question. Is that it's unacceptable. Is that something? Is there something you could do to spark that effort to increase it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm I'm in charge of this unit. Um, special teams is, is is what I got hired to do is coach it. And so you know, I'm passionate about it. Uh, I feel strong with my ability to coach special teams. And uh, you know, I, I we need the players to to uh, you know go out and and you know do what they're supposed to do. And and I, I believe in them, and they believe in me. So. Um, we're ready to get on to New England, and we got a great, like, like you said, we got a great challenge opportunity to go out and, um, you know, get the season going. When you have that performance, like in, in Detroit, yeah. you know, it was said that, hey, you guys were sacrificing coverage for protection. Is that really a valid excuse for, for what happened? No, there's no excuse. No excuse. Um, it's on me to get that fixed. Uh, you know, like I mentioned, it starts with giving our guys opportunity, a chance to go down and cover. Uh, it's unacceptable. And at the end of the day, it, it comes back on me, and, and we'll get it fixed. Trey, a couple of times, seemed to be down there but out of position behind the, the return man after he caught the ball. What what causes things like that? Well, the the, the, fir the first one was a plus 50 punt. Um, you know, so he's going back. We're, we're counting on Stoney to land that thing inside the 10-yard line. So in case that gun or, or that returner doesn't catch it, we're there in position to catch it. Um, you know, the first one, I think that happened. And then and then he got kind of bumped out of the way. So he's got to get in front of him on that particular play. So we're gonna, always going to have one guy in front, one guy in back. Uh, the second one, uh, they viced our kickside gunner. So we ended up punting it to the single. And Trey kind of got pushed back. But then Mason Kinsey's got to nose it up and, and be there. And he got he got viced. He was, he was uh, double teamed. So he just got washed by the play and um, certainly unacceptable. Guys, his, his effort or performance is unacceptable in three out of seven games so far in the season. What happens to that? I, I, I don't think it's three out of seven games. This last game was, was kind of an anomaly. Um, you know, we just – we got beat, and it's unacceptable. Um, we we got to play with our hair on fire, and, and we will. But you, you stood there and said the special team's performance three, three times when you've met with us after a game – You've said it's unacceptable. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering what what kind of consequence is there for a yeah. guy if he's unacceptable three out of yeah. seven times? Yeah, it hasn't been effort. Effort's never been an issue here. Um, you know, I think guys are passionate. I know guys are passionate about it, but just executing their assignment at an extremely high level and, you know, just hammering the details and getting guys ready to roll. Well, a, you just said effort was a problem in this game. Mm -hmm. B, B, the question wasn't about effort. So if you could take both of those. First off, you said effort was a problem this game. This game, yeah. Okay. But separate of the effort, if a guy is putting forth an unacceptable performance in three out of seven games, what happens to that guy? You're looking for a guy to come in and make things right. That's, that's, what, that's what our job is to do, is, is put the best 11 on the field. Um, it's a performance-based business. So you got to go out there and perform able to come in and help you right away, or is he going to have to take a little time to get up to speed? The, we'll see. We'll see how this week goes. Um, this guy's a, he, you know, he's legit. And so hopefully he can come in here and help us right away. I think one of the most common responses to struggles on the team is why not just punt it out of bounds mm -hmm. every play? Can you explain why you don't think that is the solution? Uh, it's all about control and field position. Um, you know, so if we, if we if there, there's times when we're, we're trying to kick that ball out of bounds, but we're just trying to, you know, make sure it's op optimal, um, you know, at least getting it, you know, 44, 45 yards down the field and um, get that thing out of bounds. But if we're just going to shank it 20 yards out of bounds, that defeats the purpose of punting. We've heard from a couple of oh, players over uh, the past couple of weeks that 
they feel like the coaching is there and then simply they are just not executing it there. What What is maybe the disconnect here between, say, a practice and then in the game having these hiccups in a lot of these games? What's the disconnect there? Yeah, you, you know, I, I appreciate the player saying that, but at the end of the day, it's not me. I, t- I apologize. After the game, I apologize to the, guy, to the guys. I didn't have them ready. Um, we'll be ready this week. Do you feel any pressure about your position within the organization after three games now of unacceptable special teams play in your words? No. What was one of the meetings like with you and Brian? He said you guys were going to have a film session Monday. Was there anything kind of new that came out of that? Um, not particular. No, we, we just we, – we see things black and white. We talk things black and white. That's how I'm with the players. If they mess up, I correct them. If, if I mess up a call, I, I tell the guys I messed up a call. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I was going to dress up as you. Oh, that's we got the same haircut, so we're all right. <laughs> Wouldn't take it much work. <laughs> Nick, the offense uh, did some great things in the first quarter. What's the challenge now on on, on carrying that through into the second half and having that kind of production uh, and, and continuing it through for all four quarters? Absolutely. You know, we want to sustain. Second quarter, we started moving the ball, too. We got all the way down to the one-yard line and stalled out there. So I have a 21-point half. Would have been nice. You know, the second half, kind of, we kind of started a little slow, and we had that first three and out, and then got really behind the chains a couple times. And so we, just, if you stayed on schedule in the first half like we did, we didn't really get in any third and longs, and then we were able to continue that in the – if we were continue that in the second half, we think we would have the same results. But turned it over and just all those self-inflicted wounds. So we're really – kind of trying to keep correcting those and stop shooting ourselves in the foot and things will kind of continue like they did in that first quarter. With Will at the start of a week when you're not 100% sure on his availability as far as handling reps with him and Mason. Yeah, we kind of had a good plan, especially now that after that first week with Buffalo where he was going and then he was out and now we've really been able to have a plan of this is kind of Will's things that are just in for Will. What If he plays, these things are just in for Mason if he plays and then there's a uh, kind of a group of the majority of the plan, which is for both of them. But there's a couple of things where we try to play to each guy's strengths. So now that Will was back out there getting some reps, it was good, and he kind of got a hit at those things. So it was good to – I think we have a good plan of those guys being in the right spots. You yeah, into the one-yard line and kind of stalling mm-hmm. out. Uh, that series of play calling, um, the four-pass plays. Yep. From your perspective, like, what was the reasoning for you know, attacking it that way? A couple things. We thought we had an advantage throwing the ball. We thought we could get the matchups we wanted. So that kind of went into that phase. So those were the best four plays we liked as kind of coming out as we talked about it as a red zone plan. And then hindsight, obviously 2020, if it, we would have run it and, you know, especially probably that third and fourth down, probably maybe change some personnel and things like that. I think we could always second guess that. But going into the game, we wanted those were our top four red zone passes down there inside the five. And so we kind of wanted to go with what got us there. And we felt like we were throwing it pretty well at that point. So we just got hindsight's 2020. I think if we had to do it again, we'd probably do it the same, but also learn from what happened. You were able to get Calvin going finally in the first half last mm-hmm. week. And it seemed like he and Mason developed a little bit of a connection. If you go back and Will is your guy this week, how confident are you that they can pick up and, and have a connection which really hasn't been there all season. Yeah, confident, very confident. Those balls are right. You know, Mason did a good job giving him a chance, especially not just to Calvin, but also to like Nick Westbrook on the go route in that second quarter, right in that two minute drive. So I think it's probably been good for Will just to see, hey, just put him out there, let our guy go make a play. And when the shots are there, we did a good job taking those. So we're confident that those will uh, still happen regardless of which quarterback's playing. Do you feel like that has been sort of the difference between Calvin in the first six games or so and what happened to, you know, last game is just giving him a chance and, and the quarterback's putting into a spot where Calvin can make a play? A, a little bit. And also there was just times where the coverage was right. We got the right look where he was at the point of attack at number one and the progression, we were able to hit him on those. So it's a mix of things. You know, the first couple games, we he did do well. And then a couple of those games in the middle, we had – ups and downs, and there are all kinds of issues, whether it was protections, whether it was some of the route concepts, all kinds of stuff. So I think it was just nice that it finally came together and um, I think gives guys confidence going forward. Somebody wants to talk about silver linings when you get one out on the road two weeks in a row, but yes. when, you, when you take away when the game kind of got out of hand in the second half, mm-hmm. does it feel like to you guys on the offensive staff you're getting closer to what the vision is for the offense, the way that it's started to click a couple weeks in a row there early? It does, especially the first half. 
you know, the last two first halves, the ball's been moving. We've kind of stayed efficient. We've not gotten third and longs. We've tried to, avo- we've really avoided turnovers other than the last game. You know, we really didn't avoid turnovers in the first half, the first drive, and then the, the pick. But it feels like it's going that way, and we've kind of honed down some of the stuff we were trying to do, and we've become a little more focused and narrowed in some of the protections and some of the run schemes. And just, I think, more time on task has really helped everybody. So, we're, we're feeling that way, but it's also not, you know, we're still only scoring 14 points, right? So the, we got to score more points. What you were able to, or, you got felt, Go ahead. Was what you were able to do offensively limited at all by Tony being a solo back these last two weeks? And just how do you feel like he handled not having a rotation like, like he does with Taji normally? I thought he handled it well, but I also think as time goes on, you know, we need to have Tajay or whether it's Julius steps up or whoever it is, we need two backs because – the wear and tear we're putting on Tony right now is uh, significant. So to keep him fresh and to keep him going for the next, you know, 10 games, we do need that. But I thought he handled the workload really well. And, uh, you know, he's involved in the past game a little bit, but he really ran it pretty good. How much urgency is there to try and find some consistency with whomever is going to maybe stick at right tackle? <laughs> it's important. Uh, we'd love to have somebody come up and take the job and, take the kind of competition out of it but those guys I thought they did both did a good job last week it was kind of uh an improvement from the Buffalo game and we just hope that one of those guys or whoever it is kind of takes that job and I think it would help everybody just continuity wise you know especially for Dylan being right guard then all the communications the same and those kind of reps of seeing all those looks the talk between the center the guard the tackle and then the tackle and the tight end and all those combinations we would love to have consistency there but you know somebody's got to earn it Juan ready for for a look on offense, or is the fact that he's so different than Tyler and Tyler's so dependable make it hard to, to go there yet? No, it doesn't make it hard to go there. I think we're now just going to kind of start now that we've had this will be our second week without D Hop, so he's really the fourth receiver, and just kind of keep finding things that he can do. And we also don't want to wear out those three. You know, Tyler and Calvin aren't rookies either, so. We don't want them playing 70 snaps. So there's a role for Jaquan, and we hope to kind of get him going. And he had that great uh, reverse that got called back, which would have been which would have been fun. He got a couple of the passes, almost hit him on that big third down at the end. So we'd love for him to kind of grow and have his role in the offense expand. In hindsight, it, it seems like you guys got, I guess, a false sense of security. The practice week before Indianapolis when you rolled Will back out there with the shoulder. Mm-hmm. Um, and you guys talked about how you tested him in practice and then in the game – it just the, I guess maybe the, the amount of stuff he was having to do for a sustained amount of time yep. started to wear on him. This week, as you're trying to roll him back out there, has the plan looked different in practice, trying to maybe test him a little bit more? Has the plan or the play looked better? The plan. The just, plan? Just, just making sure this time that <clears throat> yes. he can do all of those yes. things. Yes, we're, we're testing him more, I would say, and we are all doing a better job, you know, medical, coaching, general manager ran everybody of really making sure we're all on the same page we're all talking about it i think you know hindsight's 2020 i think we wish we would have pushed him harder talked to him more and that's kind of what it is but now i think we're all very much on the same page of what we're looking for what we need to feel how he needs to feel and will sees that too so i think we're all on the same page you think this is going to be a week to week thing with will for a while or is it got to get to a point where he can take the reins again and keep it you mean once he goes in? Once he goes in, we expect him to stay in. We don't expect it to be unless he gets hurt again in a separate type of injury. We would expect once Will goes in, he's back in. Is the is the plan? What do you guys do, or what can you do to simulate playing with a deficit? It seems like that's been something you guys have struggled with since the beginning of the year. How do you guys simulate getting better at, at, at playing from behind? The hard part when you're playing from behind is you can become more one dimensional. You you know, they know you're going to throw it, so they're going to di- – they want you to kind of run it, and they're going to play too high shell. And so you're running it, running it. Now the clock's bl- bleeding down. So if it's a one-score game, I think you can really just play football. Well, we're down two and three scores. It gets really hard just to play sustained first and second down football. And we're very personnel-driven. We've got a bunch of 12 in, you know, and all of a sudden you're going 12 and 13, and they're like, all right, great. It's either a run or they're trying to set up a play-action shot at a 13. So when you get behind, you get stuck in 11, and it's harder to run the ball. So – a little bit, it would just be, let's keep the game in closer contact and it's easier to play better offense. Christian Gonzalez, as you watch you know, the Patriots, he travels a lot. Uh, what do you think of, of how they use him and what is your just opinion of, of his ability? 
they do a great job week to week matching up their DBs with different guys. So we're going to kind of be looking for how they match us the first couple series of the game. But Christian Gonzalez is a great press corner. He's long. He plays, you know, even that ball that Brian Thomas caught him. He, that's a great – he's covered. You know what I mean? That's a great play, and they made a great throw and catch. But he's done a really good job, and I think for a guy who really missed a lot of time last year, you can see Christian Gonzalez's confidence growing kind of each game, and he kind of gets more and more aggressive. So we'll try to have a plan for that, but he's doing a really nice job. And he's an aggressive, long press corner, so we got to beat press coverage when we get him. Check out these two. Pulled it off pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> That's unbelievable. <laughs> the living legend. <laughs> no question. This defense has been ranked at or near the top uh, statistically for most of the year. But is that worth very much when you're not getting turnovers and you're not affecting the game in the quick change like last week against the Lions where you can't hold them to field goals when there is a, a sudden change? The numbers is not satisfying. You know, at the end of the day, we, we play this game, we coach this game. It's all about wins and losses. And we don't have enough wins. And obviously, you know, I'll, I'll change that to be to have our record flipped any day of the week. Um, yes, we've played good defense, but we haven't been suffocating um, in those spots. And, you know, we're trying, to, we're trying to work there. We're trying to build a foundation to get there to where the defense isn't just good, but it's suffocating. And um, that takes time. That takes uh, young guys that's playing, playing with discipline for 60 plus minutes. It's about us playing as one, 11 on one. And, um, you know, like I said, when, when it starts to really click and everybody's uh, on the same page, you'll, you'll see that type of defense. But we're all growing in the defense. The, the obnoxious communication, I think, was, mm -hmm. was your expression, but you yeah. didn't seem to. To work on some of those play actions where receivers yeah. were, were wide. Well, I, I, w I wouldn't say it was a lack of communication. It was bad eyes. Okay, well, we have a saying around here: when you look right, you do right. And some of those plays, the guys that were in coverage didn't look at the man. And if you just look at your man, or you step to your man and you grab your man, the man can't get open. And they did some good things to distract their eyes. But if you dialed in and you're looking at what you're supposed to look at, those plays wouldn't happen. And Obviously, it's not all about the players. I could have probably put them in different plays, um, but we were down there a lot. It was, you know, the, the red zone menu was short. And, um, you know, I could have helped them out a little bit more. They went into probably the third or fourth play, you know, down there. So um, I got to be better adjusting, not just on the players. And, you know, I, I hold responsibility for the points that, uh, that we put up. What did you see from Cedric Gray in the months leading up to his injury? And what are your expectations for him now that he's, he's back? Well, you know what, you know, he was here and obviously he was doing OTAs. We didn't have the pads on. The number one thing, you know, we loved about him coming out of uh, North Carolina was his ability to play downhill and tackle. We just had never seen him do that in, in, in live action. But he's very smart. Uh, he communicates well. When you watch him out there on the show team, he runs around with intensity, with effort. Um, so, you know, if the opportunity comes for him and he gets out there and play, we'll see what he really has. You know, first things first is, you know, when you're a young guy and you're playing behind guys, you're trying to get on special teams and make, make your call in there as well. And that's when you get noticed on special teams, sometimes that's when you get promoted to defense. Which has been here for a week. Mm -hmm. Is he catching up? Is he getting yeah. close to being ever, ever play? Um, you know what, Jerome is, is coming from a familiar system. Um, he's getting caught up. He kind of knows the terminologies. It's things that we do differently that he's trying to adjust to, but he's in a good place and we'll see how the chips fall. It seems like that on the occasions that you blitz, like there was a play where, I, mean, I don't know if it was this week or the previous week, mm -hmm. where Roger came on nickel blitz mm -hmm. and got some pressure. It seems like that when you have employed those types of plays, they worked. Have you considered maybe more blitzes or is it too risky? No, we blitz. I mean, sometimes you might not see it. I, I blitz versus rundowns. I, I blitz way more than you probably think now. And it's, it's when you catch them in pass downs as well. You know, um, about this game and about, you know, it's a lot of teams that pass the ball. And I think we have a good feel for what they're doing conceptually from a pass game. So it's a mixture of blitzing. It's a mixture of rushing coverage. And then it depends how the game is going as well. Like when you're in certain situations, you know, you can't go all out. All right, just to do it. So it's about picking spots, and we have pressures up every week. It's about when we can get them off. Um, 
if we know they're in past situations and then call them. So we mix it in every we mix it in every game. You know, it's every third or fourth play. Gerard Mayo made a point with New England media this week to talk about how unpredictable he thinks you guys are defensively and how that's a big challenge for them. Is that something that you see as a strength, uh, maybe for you as a play caller, being an unpredictable <clears throat> play caller? I don't know if it's unpredictable. We do things to take away or try to take away what the offense presents. Um, so the the stuff that we do is is tailored to the offense that we're playing. So I don't know if it's, it, it, that maybe makes it unpredictable, but we're trying to surround what they do well and try to take it away. How has how Snead's situation affected game planning these last couple of weeks? Is it tough to kind of plan what to do if you don't know if he's going to be out there or not? It's always tough when you don't have one of your, your better players out there, but the game plan stays the way the game plan is going to be. Like, you know, we have to go out there and execute no matter who's out there. There's no excuses. So if DJ's out there playing or whoever, they have to play good on our watch, and that's our job responsibility as coaches get the guys ready to play. How do you feel in general about your guys getting outside help or outside coaching during the season uh, to maybe change up some of their techniques or, or what they're doing on the field? Do you find it is helpful for some guys? Well, I don't know how many of the guys are doing that. You know, we normally don't have that type of conversation. Um, if they're listening to the right people, I have no problem with it. You know, um, but we do a good job here of talk about technique, fundamentals, things where you're supposed to be. We have a lot of coaches that have played the game and have played the game at a high level and played the game for an extended period of time. So we believe in what we're doing. But if guys need another edge, whatever it is for them to be better, to play better, um, I'm, I'm willing to accept it. How do you know if it's the right people? Well, what I, if it's the wrong people? I, I don't. I don't know that because I'm not. I'm not having that conversation. You know, I'm in this building at four o'clock and I'm leaving at eleven every night, and I'm trying to put the eleven people or how many people up on the defense in the right position to go out there give us an opportunity to win. Uh, I can't worry about all, all that other stuff. But when they're here on our watch and they're doing the right things and, and they're listening to coaching, that's what I care about. How is Jarvis Brownlee benefiting maybe from the extra work he's been getting? Oh, he's getting better. Anything. Anytime you. Uh, you get a, a lot of reps. And obviously, like Jarvis, you know, he's he's young. He hasn't seen a lot. You know, you, you go back to the game where they ran the jet orbit motion. He never – he's never had that, you know. And some sometimes, you know, you get mad, you know, during the course of the game that you wish he executed. But if he hasn't seen it and he hasn't been in it, how does he know how to adjust to it? So the game for him is starting to slow down because now it's just not about – his alignments, it's not about his technique, where he's supposed to be now, and it's about situational football. How are they going to try to attack me on this situation? When they get in plus territory, what do they do? So now it's about he's out there, he's uh, he's been out there competing at a high level, but now for him it's about learning the game within the game from a situational standpoint to take away the plays that they're trying to uh, attack him with in those situations.